Good morning everyone and happy Wednesdays. I had to think what day it was then. Happy Wednesdays indeed. Have a guess where I'm going. I'm going to do the rubbish first. That's why there's rubbish in the car with me. There's bloody ants in it, so I'm going to hurry up. So I'm still not happy about that. Oops, Daisy. But then I'm going to look at an allotment. So let's do the titles. Well, of course, I guess I should say, welcome to a brand new vlog. And you might be wondering why on earth there's ants in our rubbish. Well, it's the outside bin. We do have a, obviously, there's no, there's not loads of ants in the boat. Um, but we do put things in an outside bin as well. So dog poo and bits and bobs, obviously stuff from the, from the boat anyway. And that's why there's loads of ants in it. And it's a pain in the backside having to come round here to do this. But there you go. I'm really quite excited, to be fair. I hope we get this allotment. Well, I hope it's not crap as well, to be fair. I hope it's not really overgrown, but we'll have a look in a minute. But right, I'm going to do the rubbish and see you in a minute. Right. Right then, girls and boys, I had a look at the first plot. Too much for me and Lee, to be honest with you. Um, it really needs proper cultivating and everything. It's, it's completely overgrown, but it is near um, Ryan and Ben. But I said, well, it doesn't matter. I don't need to be near <laughs> Ryan and Ben. So he's showing us another one, which should be coming up in a bit. And uh, that looks perfect for us, to be honest. Um, we should be able to get going on it after a bit of weed and the stuff pretty much straight away. So um, I'll take you over there and let you see, hopefully, the one we may be getting. Right then, what we're proposing is from here, let's walk along. And it will be all of this plot here right up to the back and across keep going and this plot here so that'll be that plot there so let's have a little wander up here it's a bit of a bush in the way but we'll get past that now this would be splendid wouldn't it I'm going to check what um, internet status we've got up here because I'd love to work up here as well while I'm doing some cultivating and stuff. I'll get a 360 camera out and take a couple of pictures. Right then, one last little look around. Now that we've had a look yourself. Some rhubarb there. Obviously we're not 100% sure whether this is gonna come off or not, we'll see. But it looks quite exciting, doesn't it? Fabulous. 
Well, that's a nice plot, isn't it? Much, much nicer than the other plot. I didn't show you that. That's completely overgrown. See, I mean, that'd be wonderful. If, you know, it'd be wonderful if we could get that, but it's by no means certain that we can have that. Um, I've kind of know now not to count my chickens before they're hatched. But yeah, but that plot would be ideal. It is rather large. It'd be quite a big thing for us. Um, but if we're going to do this, we would do it properly. And um, the fella who's on it at the moment, um, unfortunately his best friend who used to help him on the allotment died a while back. So did his wife and it's just become, I think, too much, maybe not the motivation there anymore. But um, the shed and the greenhouse that's on there, I don't know whether they'd stay. Um, but I, th I think Carl, who's the guy who organises the allotments, he's going to have a chat with, I think his name's Pete, and see what the score is. And uh, perhaps we'll come to some sort of different deal. Maybe, because it just, I just feel it's a bit of a shame when someone loses the plot of land. I thought, well, maybe if he could still have his hand in there somewhere, somehow and uh, kind of not do it with us, but maybe be our guru or something, I don't know. Or maybe have his own little corner on there if he wants to come up there and do his own thing. Because I've got no problem with that. In fact, I'd love that. You know, I don't mind sharing it. We'll pay for it. And uh, then if he just wants to keep doing a little bit, then um, why not, eh? Why not? Share and share alike sort of thing. So yeah, so hopefully we might meet up um, in a week or so. And uh, you know, hopefully within the week or two we'll know what's going on with that one. So fingers crossed on that one. I know we failed on the last one, but maybe there's a reason why we didn't get the last one, eh? Anyway, speak to you later. Bye. Happy Thursdays, everyone. And I brought Lee up to the potential allotment. So she can have a little look around, she's doing that. Um, walnut. What's, what is it? A walnut. walnut. See, that's a cool thing with these phones, isn't it, now, that you can check what things are. Oh, there's some there, I can't see. So what we got? Walnut, elderflower. And some Plum. Plums down here. You can't beat a nice juicy pair of plums. I don't know, I think there's something weird about these trees. Oh yeah, that is a plum tree, yeah. I can see some green plums up there. Alex is having a little wander. And have a guess what else, everyone. That thing in the middle there, all right, that monster in the middle, have a guess what that is. It's hops. <laughs> so, again, fingers crossed. I think um, he's having a meeting with the fella tonight. So hopefully we'll know more soon. But we will get a plot up here at some point anyway, if this one doesn't come off. Yep, we're charging stuff. Ready to go to Wales, I say. It's such a shame that this video has to come out after we've been to Wales because we're a little bit nervous about the boat. There's a sign of modern times, girls and boys. Sign of modern times. Isn't it strange, uh, doing all that charging and stuff and thinking, I just said to you, obviously, I can't release this video until we've um, been to Wales because I'm worried about our boat. But isn't that bad? That's really bad, isn't it? And it kind of gets me to thinking, is it, you know, obviously there's a little bit of a um, something in our heads now because we have those invaders or intruders um, to the marina here because of everything that's going on with the bridge and all that sort of stuff and it kind of just and then there's obviously a couple of uh, responses we got on uh, YouTube saying oh is it because you do a vlog and everyone knows that the bridge isn't working I don't think that to be honest because I mean we've only got 600 followers so it'd be a bloody hell of a um, coincidence wouldn't it but this is going to sound racist but I really don't give a shit because it's not racist you have to call it out as it is I'm worried about foreigners I'm worried about, we just, I've just heard that today, with all these um, boats that come over, or the dinghies, that now we're not allowed to send them to Rwanda. It's been overturned by the ECHR. When all said and done, it's European bollocks. Now, the Rwanda thing anyway, I thought was bollocks anyway. Do you know how much it costs per person? Net. It's about £70,000, £80,000 per person to send them off to, to Rwanda. The government have no money, so that means you and me have to pay you that £70,000, £80,000. It works out a lot more than that, actually, but then when you take into account what it would have cost them to be here and all that, so they're saying. But either way, in reality, they're saying about two to three hundred thousand pound a person is what it actually costs, and that's disgusting, isn't it? And uh, we're letting them all in, and um, I feel unsafe in my own country. That's the truth of it. 
I'm feeling unsafe. I don't feel that I can release a video um, because we're not going to because we're going to be away from the boat. And by me telling us everyone that we're going on holiday, oh, all 600 of you, um, I feel at risk. That's bad. Think about it for a moment. That's bad, isn't it? You know, obviously, I, I you know, imagine if we had 100,000 followers. Seriously. Imagine if we had 100,000 followers. I don't think we'd have our boat. If I announce that, oh, we're off for a couple of weeks, I don't think the boat would stay here. Is that over the top? <coughs> I don't think it is. I think it's terrible the way we have to feel like this. So yeah. So obviously I'll carry on and on this video I'll be um, showing you our preparation for um, Wales. But it will come out when we're back. So that I know the boat's safe. <laughs> so you probably get like seven or eight videos all in a couple of weeks. Boom, 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 bombard you. Mind you, it'll do you all good to have a little break from us, won't it? Let's be honest. So yeah, what do you think? Honestly, do you feel safe? Do you feel that your house and your property is safe? Do you feel like over the last 10 years, things have changed? Because I certainly do. Things bloody changed in Luton. One of the reasons we were on the boat because I couldn't cope with Luton anymore, I'd have ended up in prison. Because our, our garage, in the last couple of years, well, last three or four years that we were in Luton, my garage got broken into four times. I had my enduro bike stolen. Right, and I had to pay, they found it, I knew where it was, but it still got impounded, and I had to pay, I think it was nearly £300 to have that released. £300 to get my own property back. Yeah. I honestly begin to think the whole country's fucked. But there you go, that's just me. What do you think, honestly? Let us know in the comments. Do you feel that this country is the same as it was 20 years ago? Do you feel as safe? Do you feel that you can leave your front door open? Do you feel you can leave your back door open? Reef now, for now. Do you believe you can leave, you know, anything? I mean, even you go to the toilet in the pub, can you leave your phone on your table? You can't, can you? Anyway, speak to you tomorrow. Bye. straightened out and whatever don't know when we'll see that again see look at this weather you can see i've got my blooming warm clothes on it's like winter's appeared so um, i've been looking at the weather as well for our trip to wales which is tomorrow obviously i've been there already by the time this video goes up or have i because i'm on the verge of calling it you know of not going because it's now showing that it's going to be 33 odd mile an hour winds all week pretty much that isn't conducive to camping in a tunnel tent and a large one at that so um, I'm a little bit nervous about that and uh, looks like it's going to rain a couple of days and just be downright miserable so I don't know I'll have a word with Lee tonight obviously we're meeting Derek there but I'll tell you what if I wasn't meeting Derek there I'd have called it already I'd have called it today but there you go. Anyway, I'm off to Booker's to get some more beer. Yeah, thank you. That's Deborah on the bloody marina. She never says thank you. She's, you know, that's, that's rude, isn't it? Do you not think that's rude? <laughs> anyway, yeah, off to Booker's to get some more beer, um, just in case we do go to Wales. So, 
I don't know. What would you guys do? 30 plus mile an hour winds? They'll gust. Would you go? I don't know. Bye. The boat's a right mess now. Because obviously churning everything out, or turfing everything out, I don't know, turning everything over to get everything ready for the camping trip. So I've got the um, cooking box sorted out, which is all my camping stoves and some gas and the um, ridge monkeys, the three different varieties and all that sort of stuff. I've um, just sharpened my knives. So I've done a bit of stropping. Um, solar panels and beer is in my car. Although we're not taking my car, just know that because I've got to go to the car to get the beer out, I won't forget the solar panels in for the jackeries. So um, yeah, there's loads of shit on the bed. And uh, the worst thing is because Lee uses her car for work, the stock in it so obviously all that has to be moved out tomorrow morning before we can put all the other stuff back in then go to storage we can't get there till nine then obviously most of the camping stuff's in storage so then we can put the the roof bag on and start packing properly so i, don't, I guess we won't leave here or leave um, northampton till i guess it's going to be towards 10 o'clock i would have thought so that'll hopefully then we'll get to wales probably by one bit of luck and uh be greeted by 33 mile an hour winds <laughs> so um i have had a little look again it's, obviously i know the campsite quite well uh obviously i remember it from last time so uh, and i'm good with my directional stuff so as the wind's going to be looking like it's all going to be coming from the west then i know there's a line of hedges or, and trees and stuff i'm going to try and park ourselves at the butt of our tent kind of fairly close to those to give us a bit of a wind break and hopefully then it won't be so i only don't like wind i don't mind about been a little bit cold and a bit of rain and that although it's horrible packing away uh, a wet tent but um it's wind that worries me lee's wind especially to be honest with you so yeah so i'm kind of looking forward to it. a bit it's a bit a bit nervous about it nervous the right word maybe i'm a bit pissed off that the weather ain't going to be great and the funny thing is when you actually look at the weather going on through the week it starts to pick up just when we have to come home <laughs> sod's law in it I said a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, when the nice weather, nice weather come here, I said, this is building up for it to be really shit when we go away. And I was right, I'll tell you. And uh, yeah, so something else. Yeah, while we're at it, because uh, this is going to be a fairly short vlog, because I'm going to obviously start the, the, the camping vlog tomorrow morning. But again, this is going to be a week later, so I don't know what's going to have happened in the next week. But Nigel Farage and his bank accounts. Have you heard about that? You should have heard about that. I'm pretty sure that he had a bank account with Coots. That's what I think. But two months ago, they told him that they're closing his account. No reasons given, no nothing. And um, then, of course, he's tried to get bank accounts with seven other different bank company, banking companies, and none of them will give him account, an account. So basically, he's being cancelled, isn't he? How can you not have a bank account? How can you survive without a bank account? And uh, I think this is absolutely disgusting. And before you all say, well, I'm glad he can fuck off out of the country and all that, because that's what he's saying he might have to do. Um, because he can't, how can you, how can you survive in life without a bank account? Like I just said, you can't, can you? How do you pay your bills? How do you do this, that and the other? So, uh, and yeah, and these people saying, oh, good, I hope he leaves the country. Oh, it couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. You absolute muppets, have a think about what you're saying. Imagine if it happens to you, because it could happen to you. And here's why I'm going to tell you why it could happen to you, because it's close to happening to us. It's close to happening to us. Okay, we're with the Co-op Bank, okay? And there are no branches around here. There used to be one in Northampton, there used to be one in Luton. So what happens is we could deposit money, real money, cash, in post offices. And that's quite often what we do. And we pay our moorings here in cash. We pay our license in cash. It's because any cash that we get, we save it. And it stays, because we don't really like banks, so you know that that's kind of it. we click, click two pound coins it's very frugal stuff lee's awesome at it and um that's how we, we we do it as i say and now they're saying the co-op bank are saying that they're limiting the amount of cash that we're allowed to now deposit in the post office so the maximum in one go is two thousand pound okay so well our moorings are over that so we couldn't deposit all our moorings in one go um and you can only do that five times a year so you can only have a maximum of £10,000 deposited in cash via the post office. And what they're saying, there's no, you can't get hold of them and moan about it or anything. I don't know, there's no reason given. We've had a couple of letters now because we've deposited cash. 
um, I bought my cameras with cash. So we put the cash into the bank account and then we order from Amazon. That's kind of how we work. So yeah, so no, no reason given. And um, so a maximum of £10,000 per year can be put into your account in cash through the post office. The only thing you can do is you can go to your local branch. But they ain't got no branches. Do you know how far our local branch is? It's 41 miles away in Leicester. We're in Northampton. It's in Leicester. I mean, are you shitting me? So this is what I'm saying. They're starting to faff around with cash for a start, which I keep warning you about. You, you need to use it or lose it, honestly. And boycott all the stores that won't let you pay cash, even if you're going to pay on credit card or, or a debit card or whatever. I will no longer no longer ever ever use subway while they're doing this and there's a few more as well i just won't use them simple as that and i'll tell you what if i get to a payout telling something like tesco's or whatever and i can't pay by cash i'll leave the fucking lot there and say well fuck you i'm not having it so sorry about the swearing but it's start it's starting to piss me off a little bit and uh you all need to start standing up for this this is one of them things where i say the most powerful thing you can do is say no so you say no to these companies that aren't allowing you to pay cash you say no to banks that don't allow you to deposit as much cash as you want to. Unless they're gonna get us criminally, right? they have to prove we're criminals to stop us paying cash. Because this is what they're trying to make out is money laundering. No, it's just more control. It's so that every little penny that you get or you earn, maybe you've done a favor for a friend and they give you 20 quid for beer. Well, they don't want you to do that. They want you to do that on a credit card thing so that all goes towards your tax. If you don't see it coming, I can't help you, honestly. But you can help everyone else by saying no, by refusing to act, refusing to do business with companies that act like this. And other people I've said with this Nigel Farage saying, well, well, banks are private business, so they can choose to do what they want. No, I'm sorry, because a bank is actually an essential service. So therefore, it should be regulated by the government. And if, if a bank is going to refuse you a, um, an account, there has to be a good reason given. And if that reason isn't good enough, you should be allowed to take them to court. And that's the way I see it. So yeah, this is the United Kingdom, everybody. The United Kingdom are basically cancelling people with cap by not allowing them to have bank accounts anymore. This is really shady. This is North Korea style, isn't it? Think about it for a minute before saying, oh, well, I don't like Farage anyway. I don't particularly like him that much. I think I'd, I've always thought he's a bit of controlled opposition, but I also think he's one of the only fellas out there that speaks for people like me. And maybe a lot of you. So, there you go. It's funny I started on about camping and then I talk about cash because it is it is bad. And obviously, as this is a little short vlog, I haven't had a moan yet, have I? So I had to have a moan towards the end. <laughs> Speak to you later. Bye. Well, this is a bit strange because this is the end of this vlog, but we're actually back from Wales, so we're doing a time warp sort of thing. But um, yeah, we didn't want to release this video because everyone had known when we went to Wales then and because of all the crap that was going on at the marine and the security and stuff, we thought, well, let's just finish this vlog when we're back. So you've got a tree coming now, haven't you? <laughs> because we've done a lot of videoing while well, videoing, filming, all that sort of crap while we've been in Wales. So there's gotta be at least two or three, maybe four, maybe five, two or three, five. Oh, who knows? Lots of episodes from Wales. We had a brilliant time and you'll see them in the next few vlogs so you know what comes next we love you thank you for watching don't worry we haven't gone away i know it's been a, over a week but we're still here and uh we're gonna do some allotment adventures soon as well but you'll hear some of that later anyway love you please subscribe please press that bell ends and whatever you do with your bell end because our, it, it helps the algorithm apparently see you in the next one which is from wales Bye.